in uh, four-letter code um, uh, evolving twice. So, um, but I wanted to make a point that your calculation of it took only about um, 400 million years at the most for the first life to arise. Um, for the first life capable of broadcasting radio waves capable of being detected elsewhere in the universe, it took approximately just under 4 billion years. Yeah. Um, well, no, it, ab about, about 4, 4 billion, billion years. 4 billion. Um, which is about half the life of, I mean, of the, of the that we can expect the, the, the solar system to sure. exist. Mm -hmm. um, so An important point, by the way, because we were human before we had the technology to broadcast. So if your criterion for whether a planet has intelligent life and if we are the measure of intelligence, then there could be plenty of planets out there with Roman empires and whatever else, and they're not sending radio signals. But any close enough observer would surely declare them to be intelligent. The time interval between Roman empires and radio signals is negligible compared to the total time we're talking about. So it's an interesting question how long it takes once you get language, once you get civilization, once you get culture, um, how long does it take to get radio waves? Indeed, how long does it take to get self-destructive weapons that blow the whole lot up? I mean, that, that's the next. And you're even, there's an implicit assumption that you're making inadvertently, possibly, that intelligence is an inevitable, inevitable consequence of the evolutionary record. And I, I, I'm skeptical of that, because if that were the case, what we call our intelligence would have happened multiple times in, in the fossil record, and it, it hasn't. Whereas other things have shown up plenty of times, like the, the sense of sight and locomotion. There's some rather inventive ways things can get around the world. My favorite is the snake, of course. No arms, no legs, yet it gets around just fine. I'm, I'm imagining an alien living, uh, visiting Earth stumbling on a snake, the only creature it sees, right? And then it goes back and tells its home people, you're not going to believe what I saw. There's a creature on that planet. No arms, no legs. It can still get around. It detects its prey with infrared rays and can eat things five times bigger than its head. And they'll think the guy was on drugs. Yeah. Yeah. It's an ordinary snake sitting here on our Earth. Yeah. Another, just while I'm on the subject, big disappointment I have are Hollywood aliens. And I don't know who to blame for this, Hollywood or biologists that advise them. Hollywood aliens are way too anthropomorphic for me. Even E.T., he had a head, shoulders, arms, okay, he had three fingers instead of five. There's still fingers at the end of a hand. He had legs, he had feet. That's human. And look at the diversity of life on Earth to draw from if you want to think about the ways of being alive. I'm just so disappointed. And I, 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 not even that I know that I can help them, but one of my favorite aliens ever was the blob. Did you, yeah. remember, did you see that movie? No, I, I don't see as many movies as you. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> blob is classic. It's just, it, so, so that alien was a blob, right? That's what it was. And it would just kind of move along and it would grab onto you and suck out your blood and keep moving. And it was non-anthropic -anth in concept and it came from space. And I just thought that was an attempt to try to create some kind of yeah. way of being alive. 